Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you a 4 vs 4 on Colin Bell and in this one I'm going to be playing with the 12th SS Panzer Division. On my team today I have Sora, Jagdsauce and Genjef. They're going to be playing the 9th Panzer, 3rd Volshimjäger and 352nd respectively. And on the opposing side we have Ciara, Oerman, uh, Nexus and Dandin who are using the 15th Infantry Scots, 3rd Canadian, 101st and 3rd Canadian again respectively. So this was a matter of 1200 meter range. As you can see I've chosen this area of the map and uh, I do have access to both the Boyd to Firefly and the Boyd to Cromwell and you'll see me put those down at the start of the game. They are quite simply there to take on all of the armor that the Allies can put up against me in Phase A. Things like rams from the 3rd Canadian is quite likely, or things like Churchills from the 15th Infantry Scots. The 101st wouldn't necessarily be so much of an issue, and it's a lot more likely that the 101st would move into one of either the town or the factory. So I wasn't particularly worried about that. But here we have my Boyd to Cromwell and the Firefly down. Coup balls with a Spear Troop there. And also, of course, some Panzergrenz. So on my left today, I do have Jagsaws covering this town. And he's going to be playing up to around this tree line. Then I'm going to be right side of that all the way up to this road. Then the right side of that is going to be Gen Jeff holding the ground there for me. On the far left, we have uh, Sora, who is going to be holding the line there. So it's just a matter of, like I said before, using this combination in order to kill the AT gun with the boy to Cromwell from out of range of the AT gun, hopefully, and then use the boy to Firefly to clean up any armored units that are left over that might threaten the Cromwell. Because the boy to Firefly actually has quite a decent amount of armor. 11 armor is pretty high for phase A and is uh, very hard to deal with. Unless, of course, you get it side shot by an AT gun. But that's the reason that they actually ended up removing the HE here. Because you could just go one-on-one -on -one with an AT gun and win almost every time. Because it, most of the AT guns in Phase A that the Allies have can't penetrate 11 armor at the start of the game. So I've just sped up the deployment here. Just so that we can get the game underway. Because I remember this being quite a long one. Um, this was originally played live on stream, so if you want to see that and you are a patron, you can go on to Patreon right now and the VOD should be available. Um, however, for those of you who didn't see the live stream, then here you have the replay commentary today. Now in the future I will try and do more live gameplays, as in I will record them live, but not part of the stream. So. I will just go onto the game and play a game and record it as I'm playing. Um, the only trouble with that is, is it's actually quite difficult to play and give informative commentary at the same time. And you'll notice if you've watched a lot of my streams, sometimes it can get to the point where if I'm tired, for example, it's incredibly difficult for me to keep up the commentary because there's only so much you can think about when, you know, like I said, you're tired and uh, yeah, it starts to get to you. Uh, but here goes my Panzergrenz, got my Spear Troop coming up into position. My Spear Troop here have spotted a couple units coming down the main road. And that's just uh, telling me to get my boy to Cromwell up there as soon as possible to maybe kill off those half tracks that I revealed. And the boy to Cromwell also going to be finding a shot towards this Bedford. Ideally I want the boy to Firefly to shoot first because if that hits the Bedford then it will kill the unit inside. But by seeing those units, that does tell me I will be up against the 15th Infantry Scot. So Ciara, my opponent today. Panzergrenz moving up into this tree line. We have these Panzergrenz moving up as well. I was surprised I was actually allowed to take so much ground at the start of the game. But 50-50 so far, so no significant lead. And you can see Jagsauce saying that he's going to fill in his right flank, which is absolutely fine. Currently he's focusing mainly around the town, getting himself bombed by the Typhoon here of Uermen, which is going to force his Falschermjägers back. What I'm going to be looking to do is engage this six-pounder with the Boyter Cromwell. So 
that's what I'm currently trying to do. That's why I have this attack move over to the left side, maintaining the 1,200 meter range. The only issue that I have at the moment is this six pounder is in the orchard, which does mean this could be awkward <laughs> because when it falls back, we lose line of sight, or at least it cuts the line of sight pretty quickly, as you can see. So the boy to Cromwell, I had to change it to a fire position in order to actually pin down the six pounder entirely. But with that six pounder taken care of for now, I'm going to be trying to move up some of my infantry here because if any enemy infantry reveals itself in the edge of this tree line or in here, then the boy to Cromwell will be able to open up onto it and that's absolutely fine by me. But what I was trying to do as well at the start of this game was play it relatively conservatively. The 12th SS don't like being spread too thin. So I'm keeping quite a small front line here and uh, just trying to consolidate my forces uh, before I make a push into like phase B or whatever. So more speed through arriving. Also gaining the mortar up. That will give me a unit to indirect fire at things like the AT guns that I come up against. So on this main road we have the M1 gun there and the 6 pounder. My boy to Cromwell and the Firefly both have fast move positions over to the right side. They're going to be taking the road over here so that I can get that boy to Cromwell onto these M1 guns and maybe open up the middle of the map there. Because if that M1 gun is the only unit there then that honestly can you know, give us quite a nice salient on the left side of the factory where Gen Jeff's actually doing pretty well with his Ostrupen. However, engineers have managed to push their way through to his side of the factory, but with them being pinned down, it's only a matter of time until those get surrendered. And if those are the ones without veterancy, then that could definitely happen because no command is nearby, but that's up to Gen Jeff to make that happen. Um, more reinforcements arriving here. Panzer Grenadiers, Spear Troop are in a decent position there, spotting the Churchill 5 uh, coming down to the left side with the command carrier and the MMG carrier there. I'm pretty sure the Ag Source was a little bit worried about that and does ping that to let me know uh, soon, as you can see, just happening there. Panzergrens are a little bit caught out in this tree line with these units coming around the corner and the Bren carrier there with these two units of rifles. There's not really too much my speed throop can do about that. So it's just a matter of, you know, using my boy to Cromwell to possibly engage. This boy to Cromwell finding these shots onto the M1 gun finally though. And I'm not entirely sure Nexus was paying attention. So just going to allow me to continue to fire at that until its demise. Speed throop have been found again by the MMG carrier here and are going to be taken out which does leave a little hole there but that's fine. Pack 38 going to be dropped out just to try and deal with some of the MG carriers and the command carriers and so on and the M1 gun there finally dying on that right side and my 257s currently going for the mortar strike onto this six pounder. I really want to kill that off as well just so that I have a bit more freedom to move around with my armoured vehicles and you know tanks are going backwards and forwards. I've got my Firefly rolling over to the left side because I want that to engage the Churchill 5s. The Firefly is probably the perfect unit to take on these Churchill 5s so that's uh, why that's rolling over as quickly as possible. Boy to Cromwell currently trying to help out on the right side instead. But still a 50-50 as you can see. It's not often that this happens for so long but no points for either side in the game so far. So the boy's firefly is getting close to its position and as soon as it's here and we're going to get an attack move order to move up and try and take on some of those units. We do see the shot into the brain carrier there which is nice and Panzergrens have been found by the rifles. So that's an interesting engagement because technically the rifles should win it but if I use my mortar correctly here I might be able to swing that in my favour. Just a matter of making sure that that actually aims at the right target. Currently, it's not really doing a fantastic job. There we go, finally one shell landing in the middle of the rifle squad. The main issue that you have here is you don't want to like accidentally pin down your own Panzergrand squad. But as soon as I get a pin onto these rifles, without the veterancy, they will get surrendered. Pack 41 Gerlich. Going to be going for a shot onto the command carrier there. Not quite in line of sight of the Churchill 5, so 
they're not going to be able to fire back at that. Boy to Firefly is creeping up here. I was really hoping to get a shot onto one of these Churchills, although ideally I should have had a command with this Boy to Firefly because, as you can see, the shot was not very accurate at all there. Uh, Boy to Cromwell going to be using fire position onto this tree line here if I go to the neutral perspective I saw the six pounder here earlier so just going to be hammering that best I can and do manage to pick up the kill and that's one thing that I would definitely recommend you doing some people like to ping them when they see them I just tend to try and remember where they are pinging is probably a bit more effective but yeah, just use that in order to fire position with your units. And if you don't know the key for fire position, it's just T. Press T, you just left click where you want to fire. And uh, your unit will open up. So the six pounder there forced to fall back. These rifles being pinned as well by the 222 and the 251-1. So that's very nice. It allows those Panzergrens to uh, maintain their position there without too much hassle. Now both of these Churchill 5s have moved behind this tree line. And that's kind of annoying because my boy to crumb, my well, my boy to firefly has put itself in a pretty sticky spot, really, to engage this Churchill Five. I could maybe continue to move over to the left side here towards the town, but at the same time, I don't want to like commit my firefly that far over when I won't be able to like get it back as quick, because I don't want to be fast moving up this up and down this road. This is quite simply asking to be side shot. If I um, had my boy to firefly here for example in order to try and get a kill onto one of these Churchill fives all that would happen if I wanted to rush my tank the opposite direction was I'd had to f fast move it all the way down that road and that just ends up getting it killed of course I could just move back normally but it takes forever so it's all about whether or not I want to sacrifice the positioning on the firefly to pick up the kills on the Churchill fives currently the Churchill fives aren't actually firing so that's not too much of an issue but uh, there is a round two rolling over so I thought I might push forwards my firefly anyway and see what I could do uh, Panzergrens are engaging rifles there in the tree line. We're going to have my mortar carrier help out there. Firefly takes one shot at the Ram 2. You also see a six pounder killed on this right side here as I move forwards with a 251-1 and my Panzergrens. So that's, I think, four AT guns of Ciara now dead. Ram 2 does survive the shots from the Firefly. And with those rifles pinned down, that's just going to allow my Panzergrens to continue to push forwards. We have now moved into Phase B as well, so I'm going to be looking to reinforce myself with some stronger units at this point. Befell Panzer II coming in to accompany some of my infantry in the centre of the map at the moment. Not quite the heavy unit I was talking about. AT gun also coming up to help. But as we can see on this left side... If I don't want to commit the Firefly, I have to put something else here because otherwise I'm allowing a 2v1 on the Jag source. So up is coming my Jag Panzer, and that's going to be kind of sitting back and trying to prevent the shots coming in from the Churchill 5s. The Jag Panzer is pretty decent for that job, and my Firefly can be quite safe in moving over to the right side where I'm currently being harassed by these Honey Stewarts and the AVREs creeping up in the mid here. So my Panzergrens do eventually go down. These Reki actually end up killing them off, which was unfortunate to say the least. Panzergrens really letting me down there. But going to be getting my mortar on target straight after and looking for that Alfklara kill. It's just a matter of time really until there's another large engagement. Ciara getting ready to hit me with the honeys there and that's the the recce actually going down to the mortar fire so that was nice getting rid of that recon is pretty important and sorry about the zooming at the moment in still division for some reason when i'm using the zoom in and out all the time it's uh it seems to zoom in way more than i expected to which is a bit odd but anyway counter battery now coming in that's going to tell me that there is a 25 pounder on the field and that could be quite difficult to deal with moving forwards because as the 12th SS there isn't really too much you have in order to counter something like a 25 pounder you just got to work around it use things like that are heavy armored in order to you know help out so yeah my, pan my Jagdpanzer has arrived here as you can see it's uh, taking on this ram 2 
12 AP versus 12 armor though. Very low chance of penetration there, even with 3 star veterancy. These Panzergrens holding with return fire. I'm actually waiting for my 2 star pack 38 to roll up onto these tanks. But with the 25 pounds coming in, not going to happen anytime today. And uh, that is less than ideal. Now we have the rifles also coming in there. And as soon as they reveal my Panzergrenadiers, they will get chewed up by the command carriers and honeys and so on. So I'm a bit apprehensive about this push coming in. I do have a pack 38 though here which is going to start firing at the honey and I've also got my boy to Cromwell in a pretty decent position to defend um, against this attack. The pack 38 does stay alive and we can see Jagsource has brought in the Jägers here to finish off uh, the rifle unit that was in the way. The two Churchill 5s haven't really done too much so far. Uh, my Jagdpanzer is in a pretty good position to stop it from doing so. Unfortunately, my pack 38 goes down to the honeys in the end after being pinned by the 25 pounder. But with my Firefly now rolling over to the right side, I have a pretty good line of sight here in order to try and kill those off. I've also got my 222 and the Befelpanzer 2 uh, rolling over to the right side to try and uh, clean up some of the rifles that they push through. Got double Panzergrenfuhrers here, uh, as you can see, as well, which definitely helps uh, keep some of these units from surrendering even under constant artillery fire. So the Firefly still attempting to get kills hasn't really done very well for me so far, and that mainly comes down to the fact that I haven't accompanied it by or with um, any command just yet. So that's the reason that my Boyz Firefly is sucking so much. It's also a bit of a, like being unlucky quite a lot as well, because the uh, at six accuracy should actually hit something um, relatively often. But either way, AVRE there are going to be taking out a unit of my Panzergrens. We also finished off a unit of Grenadiers here. You can see I'm coming over with my Befell Panzer IV now to accompany the Boyz Cromwell in basically getting rid of these honeys that have been harassing me so much. But whilst those honeys are, are falling back, I've got my 222 and the Befell Panzer II into a nice position that allows them to be quite a big threat to the honeys at close range. So just small moves at the moment. Hopefully leading towards something a bit bigger. But as you can see, I have managed to push past the 50-50 here a little bit. But on the left side, things the opposite where... Uh, Dan Din has managed to just about push over the other side of the road and things still relatively 50-50 123 points in favour of Axis but this was probably the most even game that I've seen since this, for a very long time like this is like the first 15 minutes of this game have been incredibly even so far 25 pounder going to be opening up here the Befell Panzer 2 and the 222 try their luck onto the honey there but uh, with one still with full morale. No point in really going for that attack. Just trying to get my Befell Panzer 4 into line of sight, but do have to be careful of the 17 pounders coming my way. I can see that thanks to the Alkalala here sitting in that tree line. And if I want to deal with that 17 pounder, I'm either going to have to do some micro with the Boyd to Cromwell. I can either bomb it or I can you know, use a mortar or something. Uh, and that's pretty much the choice that I took, bringing in two Panzerwerfers. As soon as 17 pounders start showing up, you got to bring in the big guns. And that's exactly what I'm doing with the Panzerwerfers here. Really, really good for picking off stray AT guns. And with this uh, 17 pounder showing itself on the left side here, that does give me a target for this Panzerwerfer here. I'm also going to be moving up my second one. I'm going to double strike the 17 pounder just to make sure it's dead. 17 pounders could absolutely crush my units. And you can see there it's already starting to fire at my poor SBW222 that got left out in the open. Down comes the Panzer for strike. I'm going to be doing too much damage for health still. And that's why a second strike is coming in try and finish the job and all you really need is a rocket to land directly on target and it will do the job but there just a multiple rockets landing close enough 
going to finish off the 17 pounder great stuff rifles are now pushing across the open there with the support of the avre they can definitely try but i'm now ro rolling over with the fell panzer 4 and the boy to firefly and since this avre doesn't have any hg or ap sorry um i should be able to use these at relatively close range to kill the avre that's what i'm looking to do <laughs> yeah source losing his unit of volshimega there very easily indeed uh, Boyd Cromwell does find line of sight onto these rifles as they are brought across the open. And that's really good. Just stops them from taking any ground. And the Fell Panzer IV and the Boyd Firefly still continuing forwards, trying to find the shot onto the AVRE. And with this orchard not being very deep, you can see that I do find line of sight through here. And there is actually a chance that the AVRE can kill a Befell Panzer IV, especially if it hits near the rear of the armor. But uh, there we go, transmission damage first of all. It's a good start. Going to make that AVRE incredibly slow. Two more shots, Firefly gets the kill. Befell Panzer II did go down on this right side as the honeys do flank me. Ciara taking advantage of my boy to Firefly and Panzer IV rolling over to this side. Boy to Firefly now engaging the Churchill 5 and if I can kill that that should relieve a little bit of pressure for Yag Source internal fragments going to be a start but uh, if that falls back behind the tree line then we could have a bit of an issue but nope going to be picking up that kill very nice indeed pack 38 was in a pretty nice position there to take on the honeys but with the Churchill 7 I can't penetrate the front of that and the pack 38 revealed itself by firing at it and now the 25 pounder shells are coming in as well but we're still holding the front line and a plus one and now in our favor once again so my Panzerwerfers have been reloaded by the Top of Blitz Munition I've brought back my 257 mortar carrier as well to get that reloaded and I now have some reinforcing Panzergrens on the way we do lose one of my Panzergren Führer here to the artillery coming down but just going to try and keep the other one as safe as possible um, so that I don't allow these Panzergrens to surrender at any point. Panzergrens moving up here find the uh, rifle leader going to do a little bit of damage to those we have the uh, HS129 of Yag Source coming in supported by an ME109 G6R6 and that's going to be going for the kill onto the Churchill 5. Ammo storage hit is a good start ammo storage uh, wheels destroyed and so on actually pretty damn good a nice strike shame he didn't get the kill that's gonna stop that from harassing his forces on the right side of the town we have now moved into phase c and uh, what that means is i have access to befell panthers and i should be using them from now on another six pounder spotted or 17 pounder sorry and that gives me a new target for my panzerwerfers although at the moment just going to be trying to do panzerwerfer the honeys here to stop them from pushing on me and this Panzerwerfer is going to be going for the 17 pounder on the right side now you saw me start to move it to the left because if I could then it would have been a nice idea to take out the 17 pounder here as well but considering most of my armor is now here once again the boy to firefly and the Befell Panzer 4 I thought it was a good idea to take out that 17 pounder because it'd be a lot more threatening so that's what I'm doing now and uh, with that Panzerwerfer doing the job and the honey is now falling back my firefly is taking pot shots at the Churchill 7 command infantry have been revealed by the Panzergrenz we're going to be allowing that engagement to continue just continuing to get my units into positions to hold this front line forward you can see I've secured this part to the left of my side now um, so that Yag Source can concentrate more in the town which uh, seems to be quite heavily contended at the moment and the Stug going down there unfortunately but I'm definitely making ground as my Panzergrens push into this tree line in the orchard here that is uh, contributing to our plus one and here we have Whitman rolling into battle down comes the 25 pounders they're still firing away at my pack 38 my pack 38 however going to be going for the shots onto the command carrier and if i can get that kill that would be very nice indeed you can see i'm also moving forward as a speed through just to make sure that i spot any at guns in the hedgerows ahead of me a 
There we go. Pack 38 finally does the job. My Panzergrens up here have absolutely been wrecked by two-star rifle squads and a normal rifle squad there with supported by a Humber. 222 is in a decent position though to pr provide supporting fire and my boy to Cromwell is also in a good position as well so that's helpful. However I do need to dodge out the way of this 17 pounder that is waiting to kill my 222 and these Panzergrens aren't going to last either to the amount of forces that are firing upon them. So at close range, Befell Panzer IV, that's going to be taking out the honey. Nicely done. Whitman's rolling forwards into the sight of the rifle leader. Going to be taking those out relatively quickly, but 17 pounder has crept into this tree line. And although I can see it, and I did see it coming, there's no escaping it. My boy to firefly doesn't have any HE, so I'm going to have to rely on the Befell Panzer IV to pin down the 17 pounder. But it's only a matter of time until that firefly dies, and there it goes. And uh, now with the Churchill 7 also attacking the Befell Panzer IV and that causing an internal fire. Going to get forced to fall back. Churchill 7 getting the bounce in there. 17 pounder going for another shot. Boom. Whitman down. Befell Panzer IV dead. Firefly gone. Quite the turn of events. Really, really good job by Ciara to ambush me with the 17 pounder. Probably brought it down the train line here. Just unloaded it into the back of this tree line. I saw it just that little bit too late and I couldn't get out of the way of it. Meanwhile though, my pack 38 does find a kill onto one of those honeys that was pushing up afterwards and the 257 is now going at the 17 pounder. So my momentum's kind of broken now with that 17 pounder cleaning up three of my best tanks. It was just not ideal. Verflammen, that's going to be brought in. Put a strike directly on top of that 17 pounder. Just want to get rid of it. Save the boy to Cromwell. But as we can see, Ciara is pushing on me with the Humber Mark III. And if that Humber Mark III gets close enough, that could very well be a dead Cromwell. We also see the Spitfire Mark IX come in. That's going to actually bomb my Verflammen and kill it off. So a little bit careless of me having that in a position where it could be plainly seen by enemy aircraft. But uh, there we go. It did its job. Took out the 120 pounder and. 120 pounder blimey 17 pounder and um yeah good job by Ciara just to secure that kill uh, but also good job by my Verflammen to kill the 17 pounder boy to fight Cromwell still retreating here I have literally no AT I was a little bit worried at this point I was kind of scared that this Humber Mark III was just going to drive all the way through my front line make this boy to Cromwell at least surrender um, but here we have my Befell Panther rolling on his way to save the day he is coming. So you can see in the in the distance the Humber Mark III charging towards the boy to Cromwell. Also trying to kill my 257, which is rather rude. But Befell Panther has to hit this shot. Boom! One shot kill. Very nice indeed. Okay, so that neutralizes that threat and kind of prevents Ciara from pushing on and the amount of kills that they got. So, two Befell Panthers now on the field. I've got one that's moving up here to this road, and then I have one on the road between the factory and myself. Quite simply, they are there just to hold the front line for now, sort of delay the game. The plus one has disappeared after I've been pushed back. And, uh, yeah, 495 points in our favour, but... Still no closer really to victory. There's still 13 minutes left on the clock. And honestly a plus one at this point would lead to an allied victory. So we do have to be a little bit careful. I've got to make sure they don't completely collapse in the face of the uh, 15th Infantry Scots. Which seems to be a trend of mine at the moment. Moving into phase C. I think I just get bored. And like I do very well in phase A and B. And then like I said I just get bored and just mess around. And end up losing a lot of units. Making stupid pushes and stuff. When I probably didn't need to. Like on this right side. Having those tanks in those positions was probably not needed whatsoever. Um, I could have easily just had or been patient and brought up, you know, speed troop or something to lead the charge with some Panzergrenz or something and then moved up with my armor. But yeah, just got impatient and allowed my units to die because of that. So the Cromwell is still going. It's still got ammo and it's still going to continue to fire at these rifles. 
Got to be a little bit careful with the engagement against the challenger though. The Fell Panther now finding line of sight onto the Churchill 7. This Panzerwerfer. I've got to get rid of this challenger. I can't let it kill the Cromwell. So that Panzerwerfer is going to be firing towards that with a volley. Um, Panzergrenz is just going to have to take a beating there and eventually get killed off. But yeah, the idea of this Panzerwerfer is to quite simply stop this little push on the left side that I can't really cover very well at the moment. We do see the Befell Panther continue to fire at the Churchill 7. Another 17 pounder revealed on the main road. Rifles picked off there. I think I also picked off an airborne bazooka at some point. Probably in this tree line or something. Befell Panther eventually gets the kill though onto the Churchill 7. But here comes the smoke from the 25 pounders, making things difficult as always. So Ciara really playing well around my heavy armour at the moment. And, uh, well, at the start of the game, I may have mentioned Krenschnar. Here he is. Come to join us on the field. Two star Panzer IV. See if he can do some work for us. Whitman, unfortunately, died a death in this one. And it's really up to Krenschnar to, uh, you know, secure that legacy. And three gun not lasting very long at all against the 222 and my half tracks. Air engagement occurring here as well. Two Spitfires of Ciara. ME109 G6R6 on the back of one. Going to be shooting it down. Going to be shooting down the second as well. That was a nice win for me, indeed. Ciara losing the air supremacy over my units, which is very nice for keeping my Befell Panthers alive. And I'm going to continue to use those ME109s to strafe the M1 gun as well. So yeah, Krishna moving up here with the Panzergrenz and the half tracks, hammering those rifles, getting rid of that unit for me. All the ME109s just killing that M1 gun. Focke 190 from Sora, two star there, going to be doing a decent job on this left side. Double Spitfire from Uemen coming in against Jagsaurus, who is currently being partied a lot in that town. The Fell Panther going to be engaging the Challenger. Actually misses its first shot, which was kind of unlucky, honestly. Two-star veteran, the Fell Panther with six accuracy. Generally, they one-shot things, but didn't even hit that time. One of my half-tracks did die to the 17-pounder as my Panzergrenz were moving up, but fortunately the Panzergrenz weren't pinned down, so they're continuing to make ground. Kretschmar still staying back, though. Just being a little bit more cautious this time around. Don't want to unnecessarily lose all of my tanks again. Right? <laughs> anyway, um, Panzerwerfers are moving into position to attempt to help me push forwards. 257 also trying to find shots onto the enemy 17 pounder here, as you can see. And it's just a matter of making ground, but currently these challengers really holding me back. I've got to be very careful, because they can kill your Panthers quite easily. That's still 16 AP versus 14 armor. So that's probably got like a you know 20%, 30% chance of penetration. Not entirely sure on the maths, but there we go. Edgemar gonna be direct hitting the 17 pounder. 257 finishes the job. Kretschmar now getting off the rifles. And at close range, I was hopeful that the Panzer IV would be able to win against the Challenger. So you can see I'm going for that attack here. The Panzer IV-H does have a relatively fast turning turret. So that engagement will hopefully work out in my favour. SK-18s engaging the 17-pounder of Ciara there. That's quite nice for me. I have my SBW-222 being forced back by the 25 pounds of Ciara. Also with Kretschmar moving up like this, it tells me that there's a unit in here, as you can see by the front line pushing in like it is. Panzerwerfer are going to be trying to finish off that 17 pounder and that's exactly what happens. Typhoon AT comes in onto Kretschmar, but he survived worst, so going to be shrugging that one off. Bombs come down from the JU-87 of Genjef that's going to be Trying to prevent the uh, challenger from killing Kretschmar as he retreats. 
And so far so good. Kretschmar getting away by the skin of his teeth. I'm just trying to get this Befell Panther into a decent position to engage these challengers now. So the right challenger comes into line of sight. Through wounded. That's a start. Got to hope the second one hits the mark. Even with the 25 pounder coming down. And that it does. Job done. Takes out the rifles as well. Panzgrens are going to be bombed out by the Spitfire Mark 9. But that opens up a nice front on this right side. Plus one in our favour. 52% territory lead. Seven minutes left on the match. So still very even as we continue. Airborne Bazooka there going to be picked off by the Panzergrenadiers. I've got a couple units of uh, Panzergrenz coming up on this left side with the Befell Panther. And they're going to be looking to push up into this area. Maybe take some ground there towards the end of the game. As it is getting to the point of no return for the Allies. In terms of score at least. Keeping these Befell Panthers alive is pretty damn important at this point. And you can see I'm going to be moving them all over to the right side with uh, Kretschmar. Maybe take advantage of the, the gap here. And my Panzergrenz are going in the opposite direction. Probably not the best idea. Uh, but there we go. Jagdpanzer here finally takes out the uh, Churchill 5 that was stuck in the open over there. So that Jagdpanzer, as you can see, has used up uh, 8 shells of HE and about 10 rounds of AP. Hasn't really seen that much combat, honestly. Boyd Cromwell there, finally going to go down to the Typhoon AT. Nothing really I could do, do about that. Other than maybe keep the Boyd Cromwell out of line of sight of recon, but generally you don't do that with, with uh, tanks because there's no need. Rifle leader going to be revealing itself by firing the Piat at the 251-1. Yara should know better than that. To use a Piat reliably is uh, not a thing that would ever happen. Hanswerfer going to be going for the rockets onto the Challenger as I rush forwards with my Panzergrenz. So you can see I've got them unloaded position orders all the way through. Kretschmar's uh, engaging the M4 on this right side. I brought up the Panzergrenz here instead in the end. Take out the Pathfinder squad. That's nice. Kretschmar's going for the kill onto the M4. Can he get it? No, he can't. Challenger's still falling back. I'm still rushing it down. There is a Crusader AA Mark 1 that's forced one of my Panzergrenz to unload. There's still a half track. And that's going to surrender the Challenger. Breakthrough towards the end there. Fantastic stuff. Kretschmar still going for the shot onto the M4. Gen Jeff comes in with the Marder 2 and takes the kill. So no kill for Kretschmar today. But that's the second of the Challenger's dead. And that's really, really good for me. I'm going to be moving up the uh, Befell Panther to have a go at the Crusader AA Mark 1. If I can just kill that off, that'd be very nice indeed. Instead, just going to be cleaning up those Reki that were hiding behind so now between me and these 25 pounders, it's not actually very much, however the honey has rolled up on the left side and is going to end up forcing my half track here to surrender to some infantry. Rifles have been killed by my pioneer fielder, that was a nice kill. And the 251.9 with the 9HE, going to be getting on target to these rifles. On this right side, did pick off a MGMC. So Spitfire Bomber coming down. Got to be careful that I don't let Ciara pin my Befell Panther in line of sight of enemy tanks. So just continuing that reverse order there and gets well out of the way. So that's good. And we avoid those bombing strikes. Kretschmar still engaging here. My 251 still pushing forwards. Hands of Earthers are waiting to get the shot. On to these 25 pounders we're finally in range can I do some work do actually hit the 25 pounder there directly the second one kind of unscathed 
first being taken out by the explosion of the Bedford supply. So that gets rid of the 25 pounder here for now. Focke Wolf 190 came in for, to a pretty bad engagement with the Spitfire Mark 9, but uh, was saved by its speed and also the help of the 88 wall that Genjeff has uh, put up behind the factory. On this left side, concentration of forces going up against each other, Panzergrenz against Assault Pioneers and Rifles. Rolling over my Fell Panther to the left side to take out the Honey. Did shoot down a Typhoon AT there. The Spitfire Mark 9 going to be returning the favour, which isn't ideal. Both of these planes going to end up uh, falling back, I believe. Airborne Rifles did get killed off, and there we go. The ME109 and the Spitfire parting ways. Fell Panther engaging a six-pounder. The six-pounder can't penetrate the front of the Fell Panther, so that's absolutely fine. I can let that engagement continue. The Axel's going to come in there with the Focke Wolf 190 and finish it off for me. So that now allows me to move the Befell Panther forwards and engage this honey without worrying too much. We've currently made 56-57% territory lead. Gen Jeff's done a great job of pushing through the factory. One minute and 30 seconds left on the game and my half-tracks here just making every little bit of ground they can, maybe to push us to a plus two before the end of the game. But eventually broke through due to the firepower of my division. And I think I played it relatively well here. Nexus bringing over the M10. Sorry about the camera there. <laughs> Don't know why I jumped over. But either way, the M10 coming over to try and deal with the 259. But I'm just going to get that 259 tucked up behind this tree line. Then if the M10 tries to engage at close range, the M10 has a terrible aim time. So it would probably end up getting itself killed by a 6 AP half track, which would be quite embarrassing. 40 seconds left on the clock. Bringing in some reinforcements here. I was actually floating a lot of points towards the end of the game. So here you can see the Panzer Convoy arriving. Double Panther D, double Panzer IV, two, two three twos. Not going to be joining the fight. But uh, all resources that I didn't even have to use in order to push this far up. Imagine if I had two more Panzer Ds and Panzer IVs at the front line. <laughs> I don't think Ciara would really stand a chance at this point. Befell Panther going to be going for the shot onto the Honey. Going to be missing the first one. Ten seconds remaining. Damon and Little John coming around the corner. It's actually pretty dangerous, honestly, the Damon and Little John at that range. But with one second left, no kills for the Panther. And that's a minor victory. The full 40 minutes it took. But what a fantastic game. Showed off Kretschmar a little bit. And... Uh, yeah, he, he played his part, but didn't really get too many kills. 3,410 kills to 2,045 losses in the end. The rest of my team doing very well. Gen Jeff on the right side. Fantastic job securing the factory with the 352nd. 3,450 kills to 1,275 losses. That's actually a pretty hard matchup against the 101st, so great job. Kills, boy to Cromwell, did its job. Took out some AT guns for me. 257 mortar carrier also did the job, taking out the 17 pounder and the 6 pounder there. Hands of Earthers took out three 17 pounders for us. Boyd Firefly paid itself off, taking out the AVRE and the Churchill 5. Whitman only took out the rifle leader and died, so that was a poor performance from him. Fell Panthers really, really stealing the show in this one. But as you can probably hear, my voice is giving up on me, so that's where I'm going to have to leave it. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video, goodbye.